It took us a long time. But we finally have managed to fill one cell of xenon. Which means that we now have all the parts needed for crafting a nanoscale fabricator. This machine is used mostly for making graphing parts, which unlock all of the coolest things. The first thing we are going to use graphing for is a carbon crucible. This crucible can handle the temperature high enough for melting tungsten. Now that we can work tungsten, we can do all sorts of things. We shall start by making a tungsten crucible. This is not as good as the graphing one, but it has one handy use. We can craft a smelter with it. This machines allow us to automate crucible smelting without complex redstone setups. Next, we can alloy some carbon to the tungsten to obtain tungsten carbide. We can use that alloy for making a real extruder. Our old one was a low heat version which could only extrude soft metals. Now that we can handle 4300 degrees, we can also alloy 5 grey and 5 black dusts to obtain 10 green ingots. This is actually tantalum hanthium carbide, which can make the best burning boxes. 1000 HU at 100% efficiency. And it can be also used for making a better crucible. And, while at it, we shall also make an even better one. Going back to graphene, one more if its usages is making a better armor. And I think you can guess which armor is made out of carbon nanotubes. The next use we have for graphene is making better circuit boards. We are going to use these for making all sorts of upgrades to our mainframe. However, once we got to the last tiers of computing, we have faced a new issue. Making the next and last tier of processors is going to require 3000 light units per tick. And even an EV laser can only reach 2000 LU per tick. So we already have prepared two of them, but that's not the end of the problems. If we turn on just one, as expected, it won't work. If we turn on the second one, it can work but we have one major issue. The machine keeps crashing and resetting the progress. That is because the rest of our base is also using a little bit of energy, and, when that happens, the masker liner loses the required power. This machine indeed requires all of the power output capacity of our battery system. And I do not think we can work like that. So we shall have one more usage for the graphene, better batteries. We can now make lithium ones that are tens of times better than the one we are currently using. However, these batteries require some circuitry inside each of the cells. That is going to cost us 6 tier 6 circuits for each battery. So, I think we should instead aim at making a multi-block energy storage unit. This multi-block scales better and is easier to craft than single batteries. You can see how its cells do not contain circuits. However, the controller does require one ruby crystal processor, which we can now make. So we step back from working on more powerful mainframes and move to the highest tier of the Gregtech circuits. After manually doing some iterations of a lithium reprocessing loop that only converts a small amount of lithium from a lithium chloride to lithium perchlorate, we have managed to fully craft some battery cells. Next, we quickly make the controller and the other parts. And now it is time to assemble a new battery. And I got something wrong. After a quick research on how to build this multi-block, this is the best I could find. So we go back into doing tests. And after many tries, I managed to form the multi-block in its smallest size. Which is not that small and can hold a lot of power. However, we have a lot of leftovers so we shall find a way to expand our battery. Let's try by increasing its height. 
But this did not work. And neither it worked rotating the electrodes or increasing the width. So I guess we have to increase both. That will require us to craft a few more parts, but we can do it. By the way, increasing the length would have quadrupled the voltage. And here we have our 16 billion EU battery. All we have to do now is connect our power generation and start charging it. And that will take a lot of time. Probably too much time, but it's not an issue. It only means we have more time for doing other tasks, since we haven't fully unlocked it too yet. For example, we can go explore a weird close by planet, Duck Egg Sea. We might find something interesting that might help us in the future. This is a planet where ores spawn in weird ways. Once we find an area with a few ores on the surface, we can dig down to find more ores of a similar kind. Meanwhile, on Duck Egg B, ores spawn exactly like on GTNH, which means that a vein spawns centered in each chunk whose absolute coordinates are on multiple of 3 plus 1. And, as expected, by digging at these coordinates, we have found one useless ore. Next we move by three chunks and we can already know what to expect by the rocks on the surface. And we must be careful not to let this stealthy mineral escape from us. This will be really useful later on. Now that we have stocked up some power, we can connect our base to our new battery. And, as you have guessed, we are now using graphene wires, they are super cheap and can go up to LUV. Once the cabling is done, we can finally make the highest tier wafers without too much effort. The only issue is that our new IV laser uses quite a lot of power, magnitudes above our production. And we also just run into a new problem that is also hinting hard on our next project. To process our new wafers, we are going to need quite a lot of radon. So, either we centrifuge one moon worth of stone. Or we become atomic. I think the answer is clear, but it is going to need one whole episode to be elaborated. Bye bye.